Today on Down with Dee Dee, my mom will be having a conversation with Catherine Winnick. Catherine, thank you for coming on my podcast, Down with Dee Dee, girl. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me, Dee Dee. Oh my God, honey, boy, where do we start? <laughs> well, how about this? What I love about Down with Dee Dee is there's no rules, there's no boundaries. We just dive right in. What I'm really loving about what's happening organically is that I'm giving people an opportunity just to kind of talk from their hearts and unedited and have conversations with me about things that they care about. And then the followers and listeners and fans and all that get to um, hear their hope, hope, you know, celebrity or someone they're interested in a different perspective and how they think and they feel about like the world, right? That's beyond an interview. How, when did you start acting? Uh, what's your favorite role? I mean, we, you've already done that, right? How many times? Oh gosh, <laughs> way too many times. It's well, probably much more interesting. <laughs> yes. So yeah. I want to talk about something that you and I accidentally kind of stumble upon together, which is this new wave of enlightenment that is happening around the world, not just like in LA where we live or where we travel to, New Mexico, wherever. Right now, what I'm noticing is there's a huge wave of people who are trying really hard to get back to their authentic self. They're trying really hard to ignore the noise keep their poise. And because we're so, I think we're regurgitating on all of this hate, right? And all of the uh, hate-based and problem way of looking at things versus solutions, right? Let's start with a, a world walk. You and I went to a retreat a long time ago, and there's a gentleman named Dr. Joe who's inviting anybody, anybody and everybody around the world to do a walk, a world walk, right? I, oh, a hundred percent. Yes. I'm planning because on being probably live. So I'll be there. I'm thinking in Marco Island. Oh, you're going to be there live. I'll be wherever I'm at and I'll be walking too, girl. Yeah. But the, I love what he said. The way we're going to heal the world is by healing ourselves first. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you, girl? Gosh, that's such a loaded question. Well, we talked about this, Didi. One, one thing that's great about Didi and me, we really connected um, on our show, Big Sky and we found that we had the same like mindness and we actually had the same um, spiritual path. And we both were on the path. You mentioned at the beginning of this conversation, how there's a new wave. I really feel that there's something shifting in, in the world today that people are now more drawn to mindfulness and positive thinking and spirituality and UFOs <laughs> and uh, outside it, there's a bigger universe outside yourself, but yet it all starts with yourself and your own personal journey of oneness. Cause we all are connected in a way. And I think that's what your, what your question is about is, is it starts with one person It start and, and that higher state of being um is infectious and it can create a, a frequency that everybody else is on a higher frequency and it's contagious like it really is if you think positive thoughts you know that other people just naturally are going to raise to your vibrations you Hopefully, know it's so it, <laughs> it is so true the difference between the first and second season and this last season when we were there and mm -hmm. it's funny because i was telling dj my producer when you when you came back i was like we all noticed it. Nick, the makeup artist, everyone was like, something's up with Catherine. There has been a ginormous shift in energy. Nobody could figure out what it was. There was this just energy, nothing you said or did. You weren't wearing like a third eye. You weren't didn't drink the lemonade and joined a cult or anything weird. You had just completely changed into this and this woman with this energy that when you left the room, I was like, wait a minute, what is up with that? And then we started talking and then you said, oh, well, it's kind of hard to explain, but I'm following, you know, this guy's philosophy on, you know, enlightenment, what have you, and spirituality. And then my sober coach, little did I know, was also who you never met, doing the same thing, saying, Didi, you've got to do this. And you said, Didi, you've got to do this. And then I figured it out and I did it. And all of a sudden it dawned on me, positive thoughts, create pot of, and, and love in your heart. Together, you do change your your energy your vibrations your frequency and people feel that without you saying a word i could feel it girl and others around you felt it and i wanted to be more like that i said what is she doing i want like i want that and that's how that spreads right 
does. And it's something that uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza says very well is nothing changes until you change your energy. And like, you can't control someone else. They can do what they want. They can have their own thoughts or it positive or negative. But if you yourself and stay true with your energy and, and your own bubble of, of hopefully happiness and, and being people can't help, but be like, what are you drinking? What kind of cool air are you? Exactly. What what I'm, on that too? I'm like, is she dating a guy? Is, you know, what's going on? And you're like, no, actually I'm not dating anybody. I was like, wow. Cause you have that special energy that we all do when we first meet somebody and we're like higher than a kite on infatuation and that whole beginning. And you're like, you had all that, but without the guy. And I thought, okay, wow. And well, you- you, Didi, you've always been that way. I feel like you naturally are such a positive person. You always make everybody on set feel good and um, just crack jokes and just really raise the vibration. Like you're you're the first person that, you know, would crack a joke in the middle of a, an intense scene just to, to put that energy. Or she, the one thing that I got to tell all the fans out there, Didi has a way of making any line funny. Like, I don't know how she does this and she knows how to button we call a button at the end of a scene not to talk about work too much but she knows how to how to bring the camera back to her and how to end it on on a spin that you wouldn't even think of and so the camera ends on her and it's it's just uh and it's so beautiful and fun and your energy especially when you're solving crimes and it's just very formulaic and sometimes it's it's just very basic there's something really exciting and how, how you, what you bring to the table of just lifting everybody's energy from the cast and the crew to the craft people. And it's pretty amazing. Well, the craft people are really important because they supply me with all those peanut M&Ms and the coffee that mama needs with her at that time, powdered creamer now, but I'm not over into ripple. Um, thank you for that compliment. That really means a lot. And let me tell you something. Um, I don't say that lightly because there were days that were really tough, you know, and I can see the crew was also, you know, we had some really tough days. And of course I took it upon myself to be like, I have to go raise everybody's energy. And, you know, selfishly I do that because when I see them respond in a positive way, it ricochets back to me. Welcome to addiction. People go, oh, so you're helping other people to keep your own ass sober. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. And is that a problem for you? I can't imagine any other reason to be selfish than to keep my own ass sober and keep everything that I've gained from having this sobriety and healing and then spread that to others. How is that a selfish, bad thing? If that's selfish, then, you know, color me selfish, I guess. Right. And I love that. I just love the, what your journey that you has been on, on a sober journey. And what I've learned in my personal journey is, you know, even though I may not have that substance addiction, but sometimes I get addicted to my own thoughts. Of, yes, of, of being addicted to the same history of, of something or, or reliving a past experience or trying to figure out how I could have done something different. You get addicted to that feeling and it's a chemical thing and you realize, okay, well, this is not the reality. It's, it's my body was getting a response, a trigger response from these thoughts. And once I realized that they're just thoughts and they don't control you, yeah. but how, how you can actually just change your thoughts and create a different reality. Um, you know, actually you really, that is so profound and so true. And I bet you everybody listening can whether or not you're, you know, an actor or in recovery or whatever, this is a very common thing with, well, I think everybody, our thoughts create a feeling and then a behavior. And we always say, oh, well, I just do what I do. I said, no, 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 actually, if you trail it back, it started with a thought, even if though the thought may not be conscious, it's a subconscious because it becomes habitual. So we do get addicted to these thoughts because it's how we were classically conditioned as a child or, or society or, or your religion or culture, whatever, to think in a certain way, right? Then you feel and then you behave and it's a loop. But once you understand, you go back to, wait a minute, if it started with a thought and I'm creating the thought, I can stop that thought or change that thought. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're really in so much control over our lives and the trajectory of where we're going. That's exciting. And what's even more exciting, once you have control of your past thoughts of, of habitual, of like in a routine of either repeating the same story or, you know, then most people say, you know, if they're in a rut or depressed, they're repeating the same, you know, negative thoughts. But once you get a control of those, think about like how, what, what of a canvas, a blank canvas, it can be for creating the unknown and how 
more things can come, how you can get everything that you want and manifest everything you want just by the power of thought. You really honestly can. This stuff works. You know, uh, it, it you're really right. Does. It is. Our canvas right now is so muddied and so colored and tattooed with our old way of um, getting to this place in this in the now. Right. I'm 59. Yeah. So I have 59 years of a lot of stuff going on on my canvas. But what's so amazing is no matter what age you are, you have the opportunity to say, wait a minute, is this working for me? Am I really the happiest I can be? Girl, I've, this is the first time in my life. I promise you, I've experienced the most happiness and joy without a guy in my life. And it doesn't mean I don't want a relationship. Of course, I would love a, a relationship one day, but it's got to be healthy. And it's got, dude, I've got a lot going on when it comes to fulfilling um, my happiness jar and my joy jar, right? So you're going to have to come over with your own happiness jar and your own joy jar alongside my joy jar because I'm, the day of you filling my jar that's um that those that's old right now yes. it's yeah and i'm so excited about meeting somebody one day who wants to join me in that journey but meanwhile i'm like hey i am i didn't think this was possible so if girls like you and me and guys and days who have experienced this and we share that gives other people the opportunity and the and the possibility to say wait a minute can, can i have that too of course mm -hmm. you can of course when you can. you're and when you're ready to change you will and not a minute before I love that. I love that you said that. It's so true. It really is. And you just need to be ready for it and wanting to change and changing your energy. It all talks about starting with the positive thoughts. Yep. Um, it's pretty remarkable once you understand the, the, the quantum physics of it, or even just understand just the theory behind how, how, how positive thoughts can create reality. It's, it's pretty much, you know, unstoppable what you can actually achieve. We talk about that a lot in recovery is our old thoughts. And what's really amazing is when you look at it in a scientific way, an old thought is what? It's in the past. Yeah, it's a habit. It's, it's old. It happened yesterday or a year ago or 20 years ago or whatever, right? So that's back there, but behind you. There's no healing back there. Mm -hmm. So if you think about you harboring and have the death grip on an old thought, <clears throat> and there's no healing back there you're not going to ever move past it until you acknowledge it for what it is this is old man this is archaic this is uh, this needs to be replaced with, by with a new thought but it's even just thoughts and i realize it's not you know it was for me it was such a journey trying to figure out okay what do i need to think of the future but you have to start with the present moment and yes. just be okay with now like this conversation going for a walk and just stopping and watching the leaves blow in the trees here I'm, I'm at my parents house sorry for the background <laughs> you know, I'm here right now visiting my brother just had an engagement party um yesterday so oh congratulations was, bro <laughs> yeah, he's, he's back there cleaning up um but it was just nice to to just be able to stop and it's important to be able to bring yourself back to the present moment and and then there's a like we talked about a blank canvas and then you'd be able to create your future with a future reality of it so well, that's what's really fun is like that's what I call my recovery is, is a rebirth, you know, mm -hmm. because my clamp my uh, canvas had to be cleared up because it was just filled with toxic, you know, memories and thoughts that keeps you in your addiction and keeps you in this spiral. But you know why? Because it's familiar, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a little scary to venture into new thoughts and a new way of living a rebirth because you were like, oh, you mean wait a minute, I have a clean canvas, I get to start my life over again. Yeah, big newsflash, you can start your life all over again right now once you decide to do right. that. Exactly. And that's kind of really scary for a lot of people, but that's okay. That's all right. Just follow and keep looking at those of us who are doing it. Well, I didn't do what you did, which is you just came back into your world, our third season, just completely this rejuvenated woman that's just reading this energy that you wanted to know more about, right? And I asked you and you were very vague. And I thought, why is she being so sketch? She didn't say I read a book or you just said, well, I'm just, here. here's a guy's name, check it out. And I was like, no, it's gotta be more than that. Well, I stupidly yeah. went and then changed. I came back, my family, my sons, everyone saw this huge change in me when I went. And then I came back and I stupidly tried to tell them all about it. And they were like, oh my God, she's in a cult. And I said, no, no, I'm not, I'm not. And then what did you say? You said, damn it, Didi, <laughs> they told you not to do that. Don't do that. Yeah, the, the people will notice a change and just to explain for your for your audience what it actually is it's it's really just a meditation course dr joe Dispenza that's all it is you how to how to control your mind through a meditation and starts mm -hmm. with 10 minutes a day and then it, and, and and you increase it and 
by teaching your body to sit still first, just being in the present moment is the first thing that you need to do. And then yeah. just getting in the, in, in the blankness and in the space. And uh, once you, you have access of, of, a, of just being, then you can have, um, and then anything can happen. And, and the, the power of the manifestation, the philosophy is, is you really have to feel that you already have it to become right. it. For example, if you're looking for wealth, for example, because I know there's an actor strike going on and a writer strike, the theory is behind it and it works is to feel already abundant right now and you feel whole already with it. Um, if you want to find the true love, you feel love already as a person and through the law of attraction, the law of abundance, love, love, the universe really just will be, um, you'll be a magnet towards it. Exactly. So so basically it's a deeper level of meditation that actually he breaks down the scientific way our bodies work and our minds and our soul so it's nothing more than that nothing nothing more or less than that and yet i didn't explain it as beautifully as you did i came back when oh, i went to the quantum field and then and they're like okay she's really lost it and you said you did not do that i said yeah i did and of course my little sister Lori is like uh-huh there she goes again michelle's like oh really and david's like tell me more tell me more <laughs> I know. It wasn't until I actually, when I saw people change, when there's a, a ballroom full of 1700 people yeah. all meditating at the same time, six and a half hours a day on the same schedule, waking up at four in the morning or six in the morning, depending what day you're on and meditating, you can't help, but the vibration of the room increases. You can't help, but feel it. And I'm talking to people one-on-one -on -one, people that have gone through major illnesses, cancer survivors, people that have gone through major heartbreaks or, or, or major, you know, um, illnesses have recovered and healed their own bodies through the power of thought. It's the same thing about the placebo effect is when they yeah. ran out of morphine in, in world war II. doctors ran out of morphine. So they started injecting patients with, with saline and what they found out, and they were telling them it was morphine and what they found out that these, the, the patients had the same physical response mm -hmm. as morphine did. And so what it is, what is it about the power of thought that actually can heal your own body? So you take away the, the, the actual chemical and, and just meditate. You can probably create the same euphoric experience. Well, and I was there with you with 1600 people. And if had I not been there myself to experience what you experienced, which that energy in that room was off the hook. And from my understanding, it's a very, it's very similar to those who have dropped ayahuasca, but they said this experience was the same damn thing, leaving their bodies, the whole thing, but without the drug, doing it only with their minds. I'm like, for me being sober, woohoo, I get to keep my sober chip and leave my body and not have to go on some weird drug with some, sh or drug with some shaman and shaman or whatever. You know, to me, that's exciting exciting as hell and life-changing. I came back another person. I carry with me every day and it's, I'm excited to go again for sure. I mean, and uh, I highly recommend if anyone's interested in just checking it out, going with an open mind, if it's not for you, that's okay. No judgment. Right. But boy, for everyone I know who's I've turned them onto just the video, uh, rewired have been like, Oh my God, this is really interesting. I think I could do that. Right. There's a shift that's happening. I think a lot more people. It is. And it. girl, we're, we're part of that shift. Speaking of the shift, Kat, do you believe in the paranormal? Yes or no and why? Go girl. And I know you do. Of course I do. <laughs> like it's happening. We're not the only ones out there. There's, there's definitely <laughs> other consciousness out there for sure. And um, I've had a few experiences with them. So um, it's been pretty cool. And I, I don't get scared of them. I kind of like, ah. There you go. Hi, hi. <laughs> well, I know that when we were doing in the beginning, Lisa, in Colombia, when you when you were like really experiencing some amazing vibration and energy level changes and stuff, that you said some things were happening that didn't scare you, but really took you like took your breath away. But you leaned into it and allowed mm -hmm. it to just happen. Do you want to talk about that or no? Is that do you want to sound crazy? Oh no, I'm happy to talk about it. <laughs> it's just once you realize that there's so many signs from the universe, right? And from your guide, your spiritual guide, or your inner intuition, or you can call it God, you can call it whatever religion you are. It's, it, it's kind of, it's your own, your own, there is a, someone, I really feel that there's a higher being other than us. Um, but you start listening to the signs and you see it and each person will have their own different signs and it's, it's special for them. 
Um, and it's pretty remarkable. Like I've, 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 and you get to a point where you can even test it, be like, what can I ask the universe to give me today? And in a lot of ways, or what sign do I need to be able to help make this decision? And, um, and it's pretty uncanny how it unfolds and, and the synchronicities and how, how, um, how, how, how life, just the trend of events, when you least expect it, you, you are, you're reminded that you're on the right path is pretty amazing. I love that. I love that girl. Well, all I have to say is, you know, I'm a witness to watching someone who I worked with for a couple of years, come back and just really uh, do that beautiful work on yourself. And I'm telling you, it, it's, it doesn't go side unseen and everybody around you, you know, is left behind with this feeling of, I felt hope and wow, what's that? I want to know more about that. I think that's what it is. You don't want to go out and start preaching. It's like preaching your religion and stuff, nothing personal, but that's generally not a, for me. You want to turn me off, start doing that. Right. But if you just are in your lane, doing your thing and you walk away, I'm going to be like, wait a minute. Ah, ah. Uh, can I ask you some questions? You know, remember I was all like up in your shit. What did you do? Where'd you go? What's happening? What, what, what's going on with you? You, you <laughs> is there's no right there's no right way of doing anything no. because it's just your own path like some people like I look at my sister who's here and she's just so present we just came back from golfing this morning and she's just so in the moment and you know it's pouring rain she's like practice I'm like okay let's go like <laughs> some people have a way of just staying in the present moment um yeah. And, and that, and some people it's music and being in that or watching movies or whatever it is, just, or just laughter or comedy and just find your joy. And I think that is the biggest is, um, indicator that you're on the right path is if it feels good and your heart's feeling good and you're feeling happy, you know, and you're in the right path. You don't have to follow anybody. You don't have to follow any gurus. No. Just, just wake up every day and do what makes you happy. If it's dancing around in the morning, oh. if it's you know if yeah you know me that's what i'm doing um, my boys are like really mom D really i'm like hey man that's right i'm alive i'm here yeah. and they're just like oh there she goes again except for i just oh. got into an argument with my son over a fly swatter do not get me started like we'll talk I about i don't it. know if i want to hear that story but okay. <laughs> it's such a stupid and my other son who's the adult in, that, in this trio because i'm a single mother came in and had to mediate i was like i have Catherine right now i have to go talk to her for my podcast i can't talk to you about this damn fly swatter right now and the environment and how you just want to throw it away and i'm telling you that plastic fly swatter we're going to fix it we're not putting it in the trash it will go in the landfill it will hurt a whale and he's like mom <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's why i was late and i apologize that was a very the other one was like he came downstairs are we arguing over a fly swatter <laughs> is that what's happening i'm like braxton not right now <laughs> oh, yeah, Only, in <laughs> only in my house this becomes a huge like thing listen you know I what i also you love about you i have to say is your connection with animals i've always admired yeah. that you well, definitely that have such a strong connection with animals that is 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 from an outsider for someone who didn't grow up with any animals you know i had a a cat um and we had a dog but he left us early he went to the farm early on because i think it was hard to take care of but um we love him dearly but um a, we were traveling too much as kids but i you just have a way of really connecting with with different um beings and that's pretty amazing and um, well, you know that's my next question Oh gosh. Okay. You ready? Oh yeah. She's reaching back for her coffee or water. <laughs> I'm on water now. Okay. Well, and you, thank you for that. Actually, I'm at, animals are my uh, lifeline for sure. That's why I got my big bad boy behind me. He's my spirit animal. Um, and I won't tell that story again, cause I've told it probably about 20 times now out of 20 out of what animal would you like to be reincarnated as and why? Gosh. You know, it's a really interesting question. First, I always thought it would be um, like a snow leopard or something. Ooh. That was my first thought. But then as I've been on this spiritual journey, I would love to be an eagle. Yeah. I just want, I just, that bird's eye view and just you know, like a bald eagle, just, just, just out there. Like it would be so amazing just to glide in nature and see everything from a different perspective. I think that would be my choice i really I think, so. think you're the fourth person in a row who has said an eagle or a hawk and for yeah. the same reason the yeah they got mm -hmm. the same thing i want to fly i want that perspective i want to just glide just be up there there's no traffic up there <laughs> the same thing also too underwater like a whale like was interesting i've been doing a little bit of research on them lately for some reason and 
and they just it's a whole new universe down there that we don't even know and i want to get my scuba diving license and i want to be able to explore that even further and oh. i think that would be just amazing just girl to- i gotta hook you up with my friend rich um okay. rich rich german he's the president of one whale and he's on here and i'm working with him through arn this i have to tell you all about it i'm working with this amazing group of people who are all who are into animal welfare and it's been amazing which is one reason why i'm so higher than a kite because i'm involved with people who actually care and they're part of the solution he's created a a whale sanctuary up in norway to save all of these beluga whales from being in malls no there are beluga whales in malls in concrete enclosures and they're willing to give them up right but they don't know where to put them his organization has found a way to save them and put them in a place where they can live the rest of their lives and be rehabilitated and swim like they're supposed to and and that is an that is some fun stuff right there because to me there we go we're starting to heal the the world when you know we've got to start rewinding some of this stuff and that's certainly a big part of the sea yeah well, when you realize that even animals have a consciousness, they're all like, yeah. you talk about reincarnation. There's, there's, there's spirits that come into animals and they're there to teach us something. And if you connect with them, you just have, a, we're all, you know, it's, it's an interesting perspective. Did um, you see the article when those great whites came to the people in a boat and there was two of them and they were trying to get their attention and they finally did. And they went down and there were two or three other ones down below that were caught in fishermen's nets. So yeah. they basically went up and asked human beings, you know, humans for help because they couldn't get them out from the nets and they were slowly dying. So they got them out. But that would not have happened had they not reached out. The whale reached out to the human. A deer did the same thing when its baby blocks away was caught in a kid's soccer net. And the deer, mama deer, went and stopped traffic until someone walked, chased her over to where, you know, cause someone said, wait, she's trying to get my attention and went over there. And then the guy cut the baby, the doe out from the net. Animals now are starting to reach out to us and say, please help us. We are choking on your stuff, right? It you- also brings back to what you were saying is, is that there's a shift in consciousness. I think we're ready to listen to that now. And more Thank people you. now are more That's it. To, to stop because whereas before, if we just, you know, didn't or treated them as they're beneath us we wouldn't be hearing what they're trying to tell us you know exactly. and, and that's 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 been a shift i've seen there's a lot you more know, videos now on you it hit and- it in the head it's listening they're mm-hmm. they're they're out there trying to communicate with us but you're not going to even know that if you're not even mindful of the fact that they're trying right most people would say why is a deer in the middle of the road get out of here you know, mm-hmm. well, do you, I don't know. Here's we're going to we're going to land on this. I just my my brother sent me an article saying if a service dog ever comes up to you wearing a jacket and you don't see a person around, they're trained to go uh, to a person to tell you that they're the person that um, their owner is in trouble. Mm. So if a service dog ever comes up to any of all listening to this, which I did not know, follow yeah. that dog and it will lead you to the person who probably fell, hit their head, whatever. But that's what they're trained to do. So, you know, with the jackets, some people like, you know, who, um, yeah, the service dogs. So to yeah. me, I think that this is like such an amu- a- amazing time to be aware, like you said, and conscious. And girl, I just love you to bits. And we're going to talk about the fly swatter once we stop here, because I just have to have myself a little mama bitch about that. <laughs> sure. I can't even imagine what kind of fly would be of a fly swatter. I know. <laughs> Catherine, I just love you so much, sweetie. And thank you so much for just being you. No, Dee Dee, thank you for being you. And thank you for doing this podcast. I'm so excited. When you told me that you're going to start a podcast, I'm like, hell yeah. Like, I know. You have such a positive outlook on life. And you are so contagious. You're one of the most sweetest people I've ever met in my entire life. Oh. You're brilliantly funny. You're an incredible human being. You just have such a gift that you're spreading the world. And the fact that now that I know that all these people that are listening will just be more glued into you and follow your journey and path of sharing love and light and uh your journey to to the world is just it's really amazing and powerful and i'm so blessed to be part of it and you're (laughs) oh thank you thank you so much that really means a lot because like i yelled at my son i'm trying to save the world okay i mean i'm a little stressed (laughs) i love you i I know i know the sad (laughs) the sad part is i was i was dead serious (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's exhausting trying to save the world from itself <laughs> oh 
the girl. I love you, sweetie. Have a beautiful day. And we're going to have you back on for part two. Bye. I'm in. 100%. <laughs> Bye, girl. For more information on today's guest, check out the show notes below or visit our website at www.downwithdeedee.com.